I'm going to show you how to modify a template to accommodate a wind farm cross section, wind farm road cross section that kind of looks like that. So this part looks like an ordinary road except we've got a, a drain and then a platform and then our usual cut and fill on the outside and there's some cable trenches uh, on both sides of the road. Uh, these flat sections need to be adjustable width and the elevation of the platform for the cable trenches is a constant offset from the roadway in the center line. Okay, so I've got a, a piece of road here and I'm using, well let's look at my templates. I'm using the default roadway template and I want to make a new template. First thing I'm going to do is copy the existing one and then I'll modify it. So there's a copy. Let's change its name. Wind farm template. Now in my picture, the roadway had a surfacing uh, two surfacing layers. So I'm going to change this to have two layers. You can see I've added a layer on top there and I'll just reduce this one to point 0.2. There we go. Now I could go and modify the right hand side but when you're building a new template it makes sense to just delete one side. I'm going to delete the right hand side. Get everything working on the other side and then we'll put them back later. So let's start with working on the left. Okay, we got the roadway right. Uh, ditch, that looks okay for a real ditch. Um, and slopes, I'm not sure where it's getting its slopes from. Let's look. Okay, it's set to auto. I'm going to change that to um, a fixed cut slope of 100% and fill slope of 50%. Whoops, 2 to 1, 50%. Okay. Now the first thing I notice is that when I lift this template above the ground, the ditch disappears, and I need to put in something that looks like a ditch that has the um, property of staying there even when I'm in fill. Let's get all of the e-library, select all, Okay, there's the entire e-library that's up to date as of now. And I'm looking in my ditch components and I see one here called above ground. I actually did have to look around a little bit to find this ditch, but it works perfectly. It's got all the properties I need. So copy, go to my new template and paste as new left. So I've now got two ditches. One appears even when the road is in fill, the other one only when the road is in cut. Now to, to finish um, the ditches there, but I need this flat section in, so I'm going to use a link to create that. Here's my links and connectors. And the one that seemed to make the most sense to me is this one, and again, if you're not sure what a what a uh, component does, you just click on it and look at it. See how it behaves when you move the um, dummy alignment around. Uh, you could paste it into your template and see how it behaves there. And you can always look at the properties and see what it what it does. So this one um, has a distance and a slope. Um, I think that's perfect. Oh, wait a minute. Now why is that different from this one? <laughs> <laughs> horizontal offset slope distance hmm. I think this is the one I want I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it over here in my new template right after the first fixed ditch. 
There we go. Now let's modify it. So currently the slope is set to 50%. Let's change that to zero. So it's flat. And the distance, as you can see, is this distance here from the, the bottom of that ditch. I'm just going to throw a two in there for now. Now I'm missing something. Um, it's almost right, especially if we were above ground, except I need a little slope going up the back of the fixed ditch, which is uh, this this little slope right here. Okay. Turns out my ditch component has an option for that. It's called um, back slope height. Okay, change that to, let's say, half a meter. Now, is everything else good in here? No, I think I'm going to change these slopes. So every component has various parameters that you can modify, and many of them can be overridden. So to define the elevation of my new flat spot here, I need to define the ditch depth and the back slope height, and it'll be the difference of the two. So my depth here, let's change that to 0.75. Now my ditch bottom here is uh, three quarters of a meter down from my road edge, and then my back slope height is 0.5 meters up. So this point is a quarter of a meter down. Okay. Well, it's getting close. Oh, I don't like the width. Let's change the width back a bit. One meter. And you can see it's narrower now. Finally, well, actually, I think we're done. Let's just look. Yeah, okay. So I wasn't 100% sure from the specification whether this ditch is necessary if I'm in cut because it would be possible to inslope this platform so that it would fall into this ditch. Let's just do that. So I'm going to go to my link and change the slope. Um, let's put in a fairly big slope to see what it looks like. Okay, that's right. That's an inslope. So if I change that to say 5%, now I've got an, an inslope into this ditch and I can afford to throw this ditch away. Um, there's two ways to do that. I could simply delete it or it has a remove ditch option. And the reason that's in the template component at all is so that you can turn the ditch on and off with an override. So you can override that parameter and turn the ditch on or turn it off. I've turned it off everywhere at this point because there's no override. Well, we've got the shape right. Now we need to add in the, uh, the cable trenches. Um, and of course, duplicate so we get both sides. I lift that up. That looks pretty close to what we were asking for. Uh, what am I going to use for a cable trench? Now, I, I looked through our e-library and I couldn't find anything that would, that would work. Um, there are some trenches that will actually do cuts and fills, but I don't want that. I just want a little picture of a cable trench that doesn't actually affect my, my volumes. And the thing I came up with that works best is a barrier. So we've got a barrier called a guardrail, which always falls on the ground, and you just pick the offset. So that's what I'm going to use. So copy that and paste it into my new template right here. Put it at the end. And there it is. Now let's modify it so it works the way we want it. First of all, we want a depth. Let's just pick a meter. We can change that later. And make the height zero. So it's always underground. Just change the offset so that it falls where I want it to. Okay, and finally, let's get rid of the little um, rail on there. It's not, it's not adding anything. I can delete that. 
Uh, the rail depth is zero. The rail thickness, let's set that to zero as well. So there's no rail at all. And how about the width? Yeah, 0.3 seems reasonable. Um, we'll leave it like that. Obviously, that can be changed. And the width is added to the offset position. So the offset here of 8 meters is on the inside of the of the post or cable trench. And if I make that number bigger, it gets bigger toward the outside. So that's how that works. Let's just set that to 0.3 and say OK. Well, I'm pretty happy with this. It, it seems to do everything I want it to do. Um, I'm just going to now duplicate everything and put it on the right-hand side. Copy, paste is new right. You can do all the lefts and then all the rights. It doesn't really make any difference. I like to do left, right, left, right. It's up to you. Paste is new right. Link, copy, paste is new right. two things. I want to make this one uh, wider than that one. That's how it is in my picture. So I go up to my link. You can see I picked the right one because it's highlighted. If I picked the wrong one, it'd be oops on the other side. And open the options with a double click. Change the offset here. So this is this is two meters now. Let's change it to four. And let's add a couple more barriers. Copy, paste as new, right? Now you can't see it, it's sitting on top of the other one, but I can change its offset. So instead of eight, let's make it nine. And there it is. And let's copy that one more time and paste it one more time. And change the offset again to 10. There's a template, all done. Now if I wanted to reuse this template, um, I would use Save Table, pick the templates that I want to put in my table, and save. So I'm going to call this uh, Demo. And it goes into your settings and layouts folder, and you can reuse it anytime you want by using the merge option. So if I didn't have that template in here, let's delete it, and I wanted it, I just click on merge, go find the template, there it is, click open, that's the only one in there. And now it's added to my list. Let's just move it up. So the template is configurable by modifying each of the components. It's also configurable by overriding the parameters in each component. For example, um, it might you might want to override that link width. Uh, there it is. And the variable I would look to override is called dist, which is kind of a generic term, but that's the variable you would look for in the overrides list. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Hopefully that will help you with your template construction.